All right. Thank you so much for staying with Daybreak. We mentioned that this is State of the Nation where we talk about several issues that have been making headlines in the news. We'd like to hear your views on them at Trevor Mbidi at Citizen TV Kenya. Use the hashtag Daybreak. Let me introduce my guest real quick, beginning from my father's right, Honorable Caleb Kositan, Member of Parliament for Soy. Thank you so much for making time. Honorable Dr. Tiende Amolo, Member of Parliament for Arieda. Thank you for making time. Then we go to Honorable Dr. Kimani Wamatangi, Senator. Kiambu, thank you so much for making time. And His Excellency Dr. Alfred Mutua, Machakos Governor, thank you so much for making time as well. Front page of the Standard, there's a story there of how I walked into Kemza and out with a 347 million shillings deal. Easy as ABC, they say. Woman with no credentials or capacity to supply medical equipment stands parliamentary committee with how she secured huge COVID-19 equipment tender as mystery surrounds the role of former ESCC boss Halake Wako. Governor, I'll start with you on this because you clearly you always mentioned that you want to run for president, but I've been told your microphone has a bit of concern. They will come to you in just a bit okay. mm -hmm. to find out what's happening there and find out. Governor, actually, let's, let me bring you in right now. Yes, yes, yes. How uh, do you deal with this? No, I think the, the question is not about the woman walking in. The question is who was she fronting? Because realistically, you don't expect any person to just walk in and get a tender. <coughs> that means that she was a front. This is a person being used by somebody in power to get a tender. So the money goes to her, she withdraws the money, gives the person in power. So what we need to know is that who was being used. And to know this, we need to know who gave her the tender. Because the person who gave her the tender has to be squeezed to tell us, or she has to be squeezed to tell us, who, who you are to Because the way Kenya is operating now, <coughs> it's, uh, it doesn't matter now. It doesn't seem it doesn't matter. Come on, Ajua Mutu, you'll get the big tender, whether you supply or you don't supply. So this is a very, it's a, it's a story. This is the story that should actually be the headline, <coughs> not, not on these other issues of politics. Yeah. This is the story, because this is what concerns the rest of us in our country. We talk about youth uh, being employed. We talk about the problems of financing. We talk about debt and all that. This is pure and simple corruption. But this woman, as far as I'm concerned, is just a nidereva. Okay. Senator Omatang. Uh, uh, Trevor, uh, you know, I have served in the Public Accounts Committee for a while. And, um, and I would be asking a few fundamental questions myself before giving credence to, to, to the content of the story. Uh, because, uh, yes, uh, as, as narrated, it is it's said that the, the woman walked in. Yeah. Uh, she's actually on, on, on record having said that. I, you know, it, it, it sounded very very casual. you know not only casual but improbable yeah uh, that, that somebody can just walk in and get that done <clears throat> but you know my, my concern was why were the key fundamental issues that would that that would see a matter like that proceeding to a conclusive case then that would bring out the the, 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 the people who are who, who are guilty why, why were those fundamentals left out first for example what was the cost of supply for the for these uh, masks that she was applying, was she supplying at ten shillings at a hundred? Was it was it over bloated or yeah. was it quoted fairly? Number two, the key fundamental question is: Did she supply? Uh, because uh, you, uh, you know why, why I'm taking that that, that line, um, Trevor. Many times when I have sat in the public accounts committee, you can come up with this kind of issues. It's it's brought out and sensationalized, yeah. but uh, unless those fundamental questions are brought to light. Uh, then you find that it will just be a story, but then it will die. Lastly, maybe I would be asking uh, also fundamentally. Yeah. And I've raised this before. I said it when uh, COVID struck. And then remember, there were so many pronouncements that were made at that time uh, such that we had to procure under emergency. Mm -hmm. and, and I said, by the end of this process, when the dust settles, you will see things you have never seen in this country. Because wh every time when the window for emergency procurement is open, then all hell breaks loose. Yeah. That's why you find that all manner of things are done. People will, will, will go and procure things at unbelievable prices. I mean, you will buy from your brother and, and this kind of thing. So, so uh, I believe the onus also is on parliament. We have to deal with uh, the, 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 the Procurement and uh, Disposal Act Public Procurement and Disposal Act on that provision of emergency and see how can it be enhanced to ensure that it is not abused. Because uh, most of the time when we sat with the governors yeah. during the public accounts uh, mm -hmm. committee hearings and we've sat there with Dr. Alfred Motua, you find that every time when 
a procurement uh, deal is unexplainable or when it has issues, it will be uh, lumped under procurement and emergency because that law is very, it's, it's open-ended. Yeah. Uh, it just says once you have uh, declared that it's an emergency, you can procure, you don't have to vet, you do not have uh, to, to look at many details, you don't have to, to, to uh, uh, advertise for tender. Yeah. You just go ahead and procure because it is under emergency. And I think that once we, we if, if we look at that as parliament, yeah. we could uh, start to cure this, but uh, I, th I think key is yeah. uh, those, those two questions in my mind. Mm -hmm. uh, what was the price of procurement? And then was, was, was indeed the supply yeah. done at yeah. the end of the day. Okay. And if the supply was there, then you find that even if you took this case to a court of law, uh, it may fail in most of the, of, 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 uh, the key areas yeah. uh, that would uh, procure conviction. Okay. Yeah. Well, Dr. Dr. Tiende, what do you make of this situation? Are we simply in a wild goose chase? Because what the Senator is saying is fundamental. Well, this has happened. Yes, we know it's 347 million, but then the question comes in how much was it actually supplied? The burden of proof for such cases then would be beyond reasonable doubt. Are you able to get a conviction on such a case, really? Yeah, thank you, Trevor. First, um, let me say something before I come there. Um, for the last, we've had an eventful week since we were last here. Mm -hmm. um, not only have we buried, uh, 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 you know, uh, Simon Nechai, Nechai. Mm -hmm. but we've also lost two colleagues in mm -hmm. this week, yeah. the Senator Yusuf Haji and my other colleague, um, John Oro Oyoka. May their soul rest in peace. Mm -hmm. um, but it's also eventful because of such news. First, I think that uh, this whole story, there's a lot that is wrong with it. Let us start from the way the lady is dressed. You are going to a parliamentary committee, and she's described as having been casually dressed in a green <laughs> dress, wearing a red Marvin. I mean, parliamentary committees are an extension of the House, and the speakers have always ruled that your dress code must adhere to the dress code of Parliament. And so even the casual nature of the dressing tells you the casual nature of the attitude of the witness and of the whole saga. Um, and if you look at the picture, <laughs> it doesn't strike you that it's the picture of a person who can handle 347 million. And I clearly, I completely agree that this is a clear front. And the probe should not be on her, the probe should be on who she was fronting. And so I agree with the mode that the committee has taken of summoning, I see uh, my friend, uh, Alaki Wako was mentioned there, and they uh, resolved to summon him, and I think that's the, the good way to go. But I don't quite agree with uh, Senator Matangi that the problem is the law. The procurement law in this country is so detailed. Mm -hmm. And there are basically three clear procurement methods with one additional one that has been added by practice. The traditional procurement method is the competitive process where you advertise, you shortlist, and I mean, it's so detailed. But then where you cannot or you you cannot for maybe emergency or other reasons, you can go either for the restricted tender or the direct tender. But even in both, there are requirements under the law. You can't just, someone cannot just walk in and walk out, even with that 1,000 tender. Forget about 347 million. So clearly this is a situation of flouting the law. The last one is what has come to be known as government to government tender. Strictly speaking, it's not pro properly provided for. But we have had a practice where the government sometimes procures, and most of the other bigger scandals have come under the so-called government to government. Yeah. When you brought, sometimes you are told the cabinet okayed it and all that kind of nonsense. Now, this is a clear uh, you know, instance of flouting the law. My problem with this whole inquiry is that we are being taken in circles. An inquiry such as this is not even ideal for a parliamentary probe. Because in the nature of the parliamentary probe, and I sit in the Public Accounts Committee. The process is so long, and it is not a criminal inquiry. It is a public accountability inquiry. Mm -hmm. And once the report is done, then it has to be brought to the floor of parliament, and it takes time to be processed, and it can be amended. And our parliament has had a history of amending such reports to remove the sting. And even when it's adopted, yeah. it still goes back to the criminal uh, entities. This, the fact that we are in this situation and no one has been charged is an indictment of ESCC and the DCI. Okay.
Honorable Kosidan. Uh, Trevor, this is a story that has been going on for long. And uh, I agree with my colleagues here that uh, this lady, Zubeda Nyam, Nyamlondo, is actually fronting for somebody. Um, if you look at the comments by the chairman of the PIC committee, he says, you are either extremely brave or naive. Let me remind you that if you want to lie, you better have a good memory. Are you aware of the repercussions of not telling the truth or trying to take the heat on behalf of another person? My advice to Zubeda is to uh, unveil the curtain and let us know who is behind the curtain, who actually dropped her at uh, uh, Kemsa. Uh, you can even see from uh, what she said there. Because we had a pre-qualification, I walked there and met procurement director Charles Juma and told him I wanted to supply mask. I went back the following day with samples. There was no written document. She's actually being fronted by somebody. And these are people who are very powerful. Remember, Trevor, that uh, when this whole saga came up, His Excellency the President gave an undertaking that within 21 days, mm -hmm. he wanted this investigation uh, over. I think we are well over 90 days now. Uh, and as uh, Otienda Molo says here, is we are just being taken in circles. Ideally, this should be a matter with ESCC and DCI, and uh, people should be in court yeah. uh, for this, because this we cannot allow to have such issues going on within our country. Yeah. It's actually very sad. Governor, are you not concerned when we're talking about the, the two legislators are saying this square lies with ESCC and DCI? One of their former bosses has been named there, mm -hmm. the ESCC mm -hmm. CEO. Should we be concerned when that sort of level of uh, accusations start to crop up? I think the, the, the concern we have is how long it takes for things to unravel in this country. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it's a very good trick of letting cases drag forever, letting investigations drag forever, so that people, people forget, get into the political bandwagon, and then uh, the story is just uh, swept under the, under the, bus, under the, under the table. It's, it's a big concern. <coughs> For me, you say you're pre-qualified. How many other people are pre-qualified? The law is very clear. Even if you're pre-qualified, there has to be a sense of competition. There's competition. If you're pre-qualified, you go there, three or four of you, then there's, there's actually a tender committee, but things are done speedily. It can all be done in a day, but you cannot be by yourself. Which means, uh, yes, we may blame ESCC. Yeah. The question is, uh, we need to find out from ESCC have they really concluded that? Did they do anything about this? Yeah. Is the file seated at the DPP's desk? What has happened all that time? It's been in the public. The camps are billionaires and all that. But we, we come back to the end of it. I mean, uh, there was a question about how she's dressed. Uh, I don't know. I, I think she's, uh, uh, she's dressed, you know? <laughs> she's dressed. Uh, she's walking out. She's wearing a, uh, a hat on top of her head. I don't know whether one inch can see this. But she's okay. She, she's dressed. The point <laughs> is, she's not her dressing. <laughs> the point is, even the way she's talking and yeah. the way she's moving her demeanor according to the picture and the news yesterday is a person who feels protected. I remember when I say me here, Itaisha. It's somebody who feels that nobody can touch them. Yeah. And uh, therein lies the problem. We need to know who is it and yeah. who is this who is protecting her. And is this just a sham, as yeah. has been said by Moshmiwa here? Is this just another sham? Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, we'll forget about it. Yeah. Senator Matangi talked about changing the law. Kenya has one of the most uh, bureaucratic systems of procurement in the world, compared to the developed nations and even the tech economies. And it is these procedures that actually open up for corruption. Because you find that all these stages help us hide things. So more legislation not help. What you need is to see people locked up chop chop very quickly you know and I've always said that the way to defeat corruption and when I take over this country God willing we are going to change the way uh, corruption cases are handled yeah when I run for office and uh, when there's a petition it has to start and end within six months why is it that corruption cases have to take years why can't we have a special court special judges when you are accused from the time when I pingu to the time the case is over, it's six months. We'll yeah. be done with this case. Yeah. We'll now have moved to other things. Then people would now feel what they called the sting. Yeah. But Senator, even if what the governor is saying was implemented, that you're done with this in the next six months, mm -hmm. it will still give another loophole. The investigation will be shoddy, and it will be easy to throw away the case because no, the burden you know, of that, proof uh, now lies with the accuser. You, you know, uh, Trevor, that's precisely the point that I'm making. Yeah. And, and that's why you find that, um, that, that most of the biggest scams in this country, starting from Goldenberg,
all the way down to any other scam you would name. That's why you find there are absolutely no convicts. Nobody is taken to a ho is held to account. Reason? It just becomes a it becomes a theater. It's a show, because as you 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 are going to uh, uh, you know publicize the story. Yeah. Uh, people will tell the details, but but the story they are telling, the details they are revealing, the content of the story is not pointed at, at getting uh, a conviction, at going to the heart of the matter. You know, it is just intended to be for, 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 for public consumption. Because if you do not ask or, and deal with the fundamentals, that will then make sure that those people are held to, to, to account. I mean, if, if for goodness sake all these th things that are said that uh, uh, th this process followed, and you can see from the onset that, that something is not uh, right, but, but you know, if, if, for example, even ask yourself, when, when we are saying that we are summoning the, the ECC former boss, uh, look at the, at the trajectory that is, that is taken. So supposing at the end of the day, Trevor, uh, supposing he comes and says, yes, I helped her to go and procure a loan from First Community Bank. So is that, is that, a, is that, a, is that a crime? Mm -hmm. you, you know, I mean, <laughs> so, so what, what, what you would be looking at is look at where is the crime yeah. and, 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 and raise uh, those issues and ensure if these guys came, they were given a tender, whether they were qualified or not, at an exorbitant price that yeah. is beyond the market, market rate, yeah. uh, that uh, where other tenderers would have given better uh, uh, you, you deals, that then you go for that. Yeah. If these people uh, tendered and were given 348 million to supply a million masks and they supplied 100,000, that then you go for the crime. Yeah. You, you get what I mean? Yeah. But uh, otherwise, the, the rest of, of the details is just supposed to feed in, into, into public uh, you know, psych, yeah. and people will feel uh, bad and cheated and, and, and stolen from. Then the following morning, you, you meet the, the thieves looking for another new, new scandal, because yeah. the way we deal with these kind of scandals is just scan is, is scandalize uh, them, uh, publicize them. Yeah to give people a way to walk away with, with okay. because people say, oh, it was said, it was seen, it was, uh, you know, uh, it was talked about, parliament looked at it, it even went to court, but the matter was lost. Mm. Why was it lost? I mean, how many thieves, uh, uh, Trevor, have you seen being acquitted in courts in our republic on one uh, always common sentence from yeah. the judges? that for lack of sufficient evidence, yeah. for lack of sufficient evidence. So that's what, I'm, what we're saying. It doesn't matter all the things you say. Yeah. And I would, I would um, I say to my, my, my uh, uh, potential president. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, you can, you can, uh, you, you can seek to, to, to get convictions chap chap. But you also need, need, need laws that, uh, th th that are chap chap, that will help mm -hmm. you to do that. You know, because you're, you're not going to act out of the law, you know, if you become president, mm -hmm. then we are, we are going to impeach you if, if, if you start thinking that you're going to jail uh, people without law. Uh, so, you know, as I wish you well. <laughs> in, uh, <laughs> and I've seen, anyway, uh, in, in the papers, uh, they're, they're saying it's going to be a, a four, four, four horse race mm -hmm. in, in the presidency. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I see you are, you are now starting to be counted as one, as one of the horses. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the freshest. <laughs> okay. Okay. The fastest. <laughs> Maybe not necessarily yeah. the fastest. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you are as a senior counsel. You would easily poke holes in this, yeah? Let's just speak about the truth in terms of what Senator Matangi has said. So if the ESCC boss supported her to get the money, so what? All is if says that she brought me an LPO, she didn't have the money, I gave it to her. So what? You know, and this needs to be re-emphasized, there is absolutely no law in this country that can allow you to procure any goods without any documents. It doesn't matter how you explain it, there is no law. Mm -hmm. Even in the worst of emergencies. And therefore, there is absolutely no doubt that this ought to be a criminal inquiry. What's happening in parliament is not a criminal inquiry. That's a public accountability inquiry. As I said before, the ESCC, the DCI, owe us an explanation why the 21 days expired and now we are going into months and there is no word. But secondly, you know, I agree that we should fast track, uh, you know, corruption cases. But unlike um, other cases like for elections, you cannot put a timeline on criminal cases, especially corruption cases, precisely because some might be very complicated. If you are looking into Goldenberg, for example, and going into accounts, some of which are abroad, it cannot be the same 
as if you are looking into bribery of a police officer who was bribed with 100 shillings. Because the evidence is different. And uh, I want to tell Governor Mutua that actually we do have specialized uh, corruption courts mm -hmm. right now. We actually do. And to be fair, in the last up to about, uh, from about eight years, there's been a conscious effort to fast track corruption cases. And also to be fair, there ha actually have been convictions. Mm -hmm. But they are not as many. They are not as fast as we need them. They are not as many as we, as we require. And especially, we need conviction of the really huge corruption cases, yes. not just of a police officer who was bribed with 100 shillings and, and, and such things. So we need proper, you know, when things like this happen and nothing comes of it, that is what breeds impunity. Because impunity is doing the wrong thing, save in the knowledge that you will not be held to account. Yes. If you see people walking in and walking out with 100 million, 300 million, what prevents a police officer from taking a bribe of 10,000 mm -hmm. or of 50,000? Because they believe that if they can get away with that, I can also get away with it. This is what you need to address, yeah. to address impunity. Okay. Honorable Kositan, I actually want to move on to the next subject unless you have something to say about this one. Well, I think it has been summed up by my yeah. colleagues, but uh, as I said, we need actually to have serious uh, input into this, yeah. such that uh, such incidences should not occur again. And by that, we need to uncover every other person who is involved in this. It is, um, it is sad that um, uh, former EACC um, uh, d director has been, has, be, has been named in this, but if he's, uh, if he's guilty, then he should, we, should, we should have everybody unveiled. And uh, this CAMSA thing is actually a matter that is so recent. Yeah. And you know, the, one of the ways of covering up is to prolong the wheels of justice, such that by the time you, you, you get the convictions, other events have come in and Kenyans mm -hmm. have forgotten. The, we should or fast track this. Bigger scandals. Yeah, or other bigger scandals have come in, they cover up these ones. So we, sh we need actually to ensure that this is fast tracked because this is evidence that is still raw yeah. and we have um, everybody who has uh, involved with the cancer, cancer billionaires taken yeah. to book. It's yeah. actually sad that you can actually walk in in the morning and the fall come, come the following day and collect a, an LPO for 347 million and yeah. it's just normal like that. Okay, let's, let's talk about maybe the Hustler versus Dynamics. Maybe Trevor, yeah. one, one thing that would be uh, good to say mm -hmm. is that uh, I think this is just a tip of the iceberg when you talk about uh, KEMSA yeah. and what has happened. Wait until we go to county governments and, and try to find out what happened during those emergency procurement period for COVID. You'll be shocked. You'll be shocked. Governors were walking around town and uh, pointing at uh, somebody somewhere in the street and saying at you, go and manufacture 1,000 masks. And you, go and make 20,000. And you, go and bring... I mean, that was what was literally happening. Uh, maybe it did is not that, happen is that in Machaco. true, Governor? No, 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 let me finish. But I'm telling you, that, that, that is that precisely is what happened. Mm. Yeah. In, 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 uh, when, when procurement was, uh, when uh, it was allowed, that procurement be done under emergency yeah. in whatever. So, so you know, KEMSA looks like a big deal. Let's go to the county government. Okay. You will be surprised at, at what happened. No, no, I, I yeah. think uh, let, let me let really differ here. Yeah. You see, the money that was allocated to county governments was supposedly five billion, which not all of it came, about five billion shillings. The money that they are playing around with, with KEMSA, is much more than that. So we are talking about a, a, a drop in the ocean, but I agree with him. It's good to interrogate how are the procurement procedures carried out. Were people just given things to do? Or were people uh, pre-qualified? Were people given tenders based on ability? And also, very important, were things uh, uh, delivered? Were goods delivered? I like what Moshimiwa has talked about and uh, what Daktari has talked about here. This, this issue of KEMSA, it will be dragged and dragged and dragged. What happened to the dams? You know, we were talking about the... Is it Ronini? Is it Damzeni? We were talking about the dams. The whole country was... Or season? Oh, no, it's good to know. Is it Ronini? Is it Ronini? Is it Ronini? So you find that there was so much uproar about the dams. The whole country was aghast. It was in the New York Times. Everybody was talking about the dams. What happened? 
hii itakuja itakuja itaisha tushike nyingine clearly yeah. uh, i i don't think let me say this uh, clearly without fear of contradiction as the late mutula kilonzo used to say i really do not think there is commitment to stamp out corruption because most of the people in power are either directly affected or are surrounded by cronies <coughs> who are affected so the whole country and the leadership structure especially in the national government is compromised okay therefore and even the people who are clamoring for power the people who are saying that uh, they want to now be the next the next the next if you look at them they have had a history yeah. of corruption or have a history of serving government during corruption so we we really have to think as Kenyans whether we can continue with the same bunch yeah. that is tainted somehow or whether we need to start afresh okay Honorable Kostrani, I'll start with you on this new subject we're talking about, Hustler versus Dynasty Law. Don't make laws against the Hustler narrative, Raila asks MPs, to instead educate Kenyans about the danger of the class divisions. Do you feel vindicated? Well, I think um, Raila Odinga has uh, spoken for um, the Hustler nation there, and uh, his statement <coughs> is very welcome. Because um, I was just telling um, uh, my colleague Otienda Omolo when we were walking in, we make laws for posterity. We don't make laws for certain events or to curtail uh, certain people. And um, I have, again, haven't seen, I don't know where that story came from. It hasn't landed in parliament that uh, there was a law to, uh, to try and uh, demonize the hustler movement and the dynasty uh, talk. But I think it's a welcome um, 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 uh, comment from, uh, from uh, uh, Prime Minister, former Prime Minister Raila Odinga. I think what Kenyans need to do is, if somebody has come up with an idea, then your duty is to come up with a better idea. Um, the Hustler dynasty uh, narrative is just an, a, a, a narrative that is there in order to create a competition between those who have worked hard to tell Kenyans and motivate them that they can work hard and become people. If you look at um, some of us in this room, maybe a tender molo, maybe, I don't know, their background. But we, we, even you, Trevor, maybe you struggled. Maybe at one time you, you went without school fees. You were sent home. You went to school without shoes. But mm -hmm. look at you now. You are running, you are anchoring a show on a, on a national television. So we're just saying you could be a hustler down there struggling, but one day you could be like Trevor. What is wrong with uh, motivating Kenyans in that way? And I think the Hasla movement has actually captured the mood in uh, Kenya. It has become very <coughs> uncomfortable for some people because what it has managed to achieve is what we have not managed to achieve in a long time. It has actually broken the tribal boundaries that normally bind us, uh, block us from uh, crossing bridges uh, across to other communities. We are, uh, the Hustler movement is actually very, very popular now and it is a good uh, initiative. I wish we would all join in and encourage our youth that really we need to work hard. <coughs> we need, despite our, our shortcomings, despite our backgrounds, yeah. despite whatever we are lacking now, you look at even the story that we are seeing on the headlines of the standard of these uh, twins now. They are home because um, they, have lacked, uh, they have lacked school fees. These are the people we are talking about. These are the people we are concerned about. These are the people that we want everybody to discuss and we are happy that now everybody is discussing this Hasla, uh, uh, dynasty uh, narrative yeah. and I think it's going to take us far in this country. Okay. Dr. Tinde, we've talked about this for quite a while. And you've had Ground um, Bukositani explain it. Are you satisfied, satisfied that this is not a class war thing? It's just empowerment of the ordinary citizen. The Right Honorable Raila Odinga spoke for the Constitution, not for the Hustler Nation. And <laughs> so they're getting it completely wrong. He did not uh, praise the idea of hustling. What he said, and I <coughs> said this here two weeks ago, that the Hustler versus Dynasty talk is dangerous for this country. It, it has the potential of creating a very dangerous and unsustainable class wars. But be that as it may, it is not criminal. You cannot criminalize something like that. You see, it is a bad idea that should be shunned, that should uh, you know, not be encouraged. It's just like when I keep saying, and I said here last week and the other week, echoing the president, that we cannot have 58 years of two communities leading and they want another 10 or 20 years in a community, a country of 44 communities. 
But while that is so, and you need to educate people, you cannot stop somebody from vying from that community. What we must do is educate people on why not to vote for such a person. You cannot criminalize it. So there are certain things uh, <coughs> that you cannot just criminalize. If you look at the freedom of speech in our constitution, the restrictions are very clear. The limit is clear. And the idea of encouraging people to take a certain political line for one reason or another, as long as it is not hate speech, as it, long as it's not incitement to tribal or ethnic violence, then you cannot make it criminal. So what I uh, said, which I said here uh, you know, two weeks ago, is that we must educate people, we must discourage this talk, but we cannot criminalize it. But having said that, I think it is also a bit unfair to us in Parliament and to the committee, because I think this was an idea that was mooted. To the best of my knowledge, it has not even been reduced to a bill. Mm. Forget about not being introduced in Parliament. But I think it has excited fodder so that the media has run away with an idea as if it's almost being made law. So to be fair even to the committee, this is just an idea that was thrown out there. Uh, because as I sure. said here, if this was to come to Parliament, yeah. then we would really examine it in terms of constitutionality. <coughs> and as I said two weeks ago, it is my view that it would not pass constitutional master. Okay. Governor, what is so different between what you are running on and what the deputy president is running on, empowerment of the ordinary folk? It, it's, uh, I, I, I agree with uh, Dr. Tari here. It's not just about empowerment. It is the way it's being given. It's a very simplistic system. I, I agree with Ray Lodinga. We said here last time yeah, this needs to be fought politically. Kasema uh, Hasla, actually the word means Asara. But it's a thinking behind it. You know, one of the reasons you look at Africa, the African continent, being told that we are the richest continent in the world in terms of human resources, minerals, etc., etc., yet we are the poorest people in the world, being called the wretched of the earth, is because of the way we simplify things and uh, have leadership that is very simplistic. We cannot roll back poverty. We need institutions that actually tell you, just like in the US, they say that it doesn't matter. You can dream and your dream can come true. Here, it's all about who you know, how you know them, what will happen <coughs> and everything, and exciting the public in a way to get votes. That's why when I look at this hustler movement, yes, it may be popular, as he's saying it, but it's popular because it is, it is telling people that you are poor because of so and so. It is blaming others. If it was just to say to Mechoka, which is what I started a, a while back, to Mechoka, with the poverty to Mechoka, Kumaliza Shule, Hakuna Kazi, because the Hasla nation is not even talking about how they're going to create jobs. They're not going to talk about how they're going to improve infrastructure. It's, it's a simple thing. It's somebody is hungry, we are starving. And instead of uh, taking care of why we are starving and ensuring we have food today and tomorrow, we are being given breadcrumbs yeah. so that we can worship you. And uh, you know, we were talking about this before the show began. President Uru Kenyatta has, uh, has appointed people. And maybe you'll yeah, come we'll, to that we'll later. We'll touch on that. Come to that. But Uru Kenyatta has <coughs> been in power for so long. And uh, having worked for Mwai Kibaki's government myself, I saw the things that we used to do to roll back poverty. We used to sit down and say, what can be tweaked at the central bank? What can be tweaked to roll back poverty? I don't think Uru Kenyatta's government uh, has been able to do that as well as we did during Kibaki's government. And yet he inherited a lot of people in Kibaki's government. So we have to ask wh wh what is wrong? Yeah. How come uh, some of his people have run away with a slogan and excited the masses? It's because there's a void. There's been a void there in terms of solving the economic problems of this country. Yeah. It's been politics, 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 but no one is talking about economy, 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 and about money. Okay. Yes, um, you know, uh, and I, I left the word money last because I knew you were speaking next. <laughs> that is it. <laughs> I, I would, I would, I would uh, simply say that I, th I think uh, you know, in uh, that pronouncement, Raila is right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, th there was no way it was going to go any other way. Mm. And, and, um, and, and uh, even, even attempting anyway yeah. uh, to go that would have ridiculed parliament in the first place. It would have defeated the purpose of making law. Mm -hmm. uh, it would have looked very cheap. 
and, and you would ask yourself, then how, many then how many laws are we then going to have to amend all the time if uh, when uh, somebody comes up with something that is either, uh, you know, seems like it offends your position, yeah. uh, then you have to deal with it by amending the law. I think that was the wrong, ad uh, wrong approach in, in my view, so I think it was right. But there are things that we have to say, uh, Trevor. And, and one of the key things that I would like to say first is yeah. that the existence of the hustler narrative in this country is real. And if you want to know it is real, go to Pangani. And when you're at Pangani, uh, just look at your right and your left. When you're on that road, and this is Modega and Modega Golf Club, and barely 100 meters from there, is the, all the slums of Huruma and Madari and whatever, well, endless. Yeah. And, and, and you know, once, when you stand there, then you get it right in your mind and in your, and, and, and in your soul. This, th the difference is for real. Take the southern bypass here and stop at Langata or even here at Karen and look at Kibira. And it sprawls way over beyond where your eyes can see. And you look at your left and it is be divided by a road. And that is the whole, that, that's our lives. Mm. Come to my county in Kiambu, go and stop at Limuru. There's a whole slum of Ngarariga and, uh, and, uh, and, and Kwambira and whatever. And look on, on, on your right. It's an expanse of green and green with one major mansion on one corner, another one owned by maybe just about five families of endless acres and acres of green tea. And, and you ask yourselves, uh, you ask yourself, uh, Trevor, this is our country. This is for real. That is how we have been. So, so, you know, we, we cannot uh, at all yeah. uh, not own to the fact that, one, we have walked that road ourselves intentionally because the first thing that happened in this country is that yeah. the quickest way to get rich is to get into public office. And public coffers have been looted endlessly by people. And that's how we have, we have found ourselves in, in, in the place where we are. We have had policy that yeah. is ignorant of the plight of our, of, of our people. Mm -hmm. You find that policy is made for the big, the mighty, and the rich. And, and, and they are the ones who get appointed into offices. So they, they go ahead and propagate the same. Yeah. So, so that must be said. Okay. The danger in, 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 in this narrative is one. It is the perception. And that is what has got to be, to, to be dealt with. If it is misapplied, if it is misconstrued, because politics uh, mostly is perception, if you individualize it, and personalize it and start saying that Trevor is a dynasty and so, so and so is a dynasty, then you lose the whole thing. Okay. But addressing the issue of the separation, and I, I said here in this show, it is on official world uh, records that Kenya is number 21 in mm -hmm. the whole world in the inequality gap. We are the number, one 20, 20, uh, number, one, uh, number 21 country in the difference between the haves and have nots. Yeah. And, 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 and so Trevor, uh, if, if we talk about it positively, yeah. that we are saying that what we would need to do is to sensitize, uh, sensitize government, uh, sensitize policy, policy makers, yeah. readdress ourselves and say that we need to close this gap, then, then we'll be going the right way. But, mm -hmm. but then if, if we, are, we are saying that uh, uh, this guy here, uh, you know, he's a dynasty because he's whatever and his father was this and his uh, grandmother was this, then you lose the whole narrative. Okay. And, and I think that that's where we, 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 we go wrong. Mm. Uh, let me make this point because we've been there. Uh, you remember that when we have had to, to fight uh, amongst ourselves, mm -hmm. either because of resources, because of land, because of what? Yeah. And, and this is evident in, two, in 2007, 2008. It is what politicians said that drove us to where we, we, we were then. Yes, to yes, near, yes. Near, 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 near to the base. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so we would have to caution, uh, you know, the propagators of uh, the uh, hustler narrative yeah. that they risk big time that if they do not make sure that that message is understood and sold right, yeah. that, that they, 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 they would find themselves having started a fire, an inferno, okay. that, that cannot be stopped, All that right. will burn this country. Kositan, how are you navigating that very thin line between incitement and just speaking about the truth to the nation? Well, we actually don't have a thin line to navigate. It is those who are trying to uh, demonize the hustler uh, narrative that are struggling to try and uh, demonize it. But for us, we know exactly what we want. Our uh, narrative is about empowerment, it's about bridging the gap that Honorable uh, Mat uh, Matangi has uh, so well uh, put it very well. That is exactly what we want to do, yeah. bridging that gap so that there is no more um, 
uh, the haves and have nots need to come closer to each other. What we actually need, what we're actually talking about is the small person needs to be comfortable for the rich person to be comfortable. That is a gap we need to bridge so that we don't have suspicions when you're driving and you see somebody uh, walking towards you and you think this one is going, to, is, going to, is going to bug me. If we can bridge that gap, then we're going to, those who, those who have are going to be comfortable and those who don't have, who have little, will also be comfortable. And we need to come up together and stop trying to demonize this hustler movement because it's already rolling, it's already on the move. Let us all try and work in our own different ideas. We're not saying that those of us in the hustler movement have the best idea. Maybe um, anybody else, like uh, we, we have a, a potential presidential uh, candidate here, well, he should also come up with his ideas alongside ours and let Kenyans now choose who has the best narrative for us to run with. Okay. Mm -hmm. I have to take a quick break here. When we come back, we're talking about a different kind of alliance that is happening now. There's an alliance where NC leader Musalia Mudavadi and Ford Kenya leader Moses Wetangula, they want now ODM leader Raila Odinga to support a candidate chosen by their new alliance to run for presidency. We'll talk about that in just a bit, but keep your views coming through at Trevor and Bidget Citizen TV Kenya. Use the hashtag Daybreak. We're back shortly.